Hi. Welcome. Same old me, same old bond, child. Finna give you this black history. Girl, I can never zoom it out on the first try. Okay. Let's talk about John Henry Hale, honey. John Henry was born June 5th, 1878, and he had done passed away on March 27th, 1944. He was a prominent surgeon, professor, and philanthropist who played a prominent role because he was prominent. It says it twice, prominent and prominent, in establishing the Black medical community. All right. He, held, he has been hailed the Dean of American Negro Surgeons. Hail who was held, conducted over 30,000 surgeries, mainly at the Meharry Medical College and Millie E. Hale Hospital. And we're gonna find out who Millie is in just a minute. He practiced um, medicine, taught at Meharry for 29 years, all at the same time, mentoring a plethora, a plethora, I, I struggle, of black surgeons. Together with his wife, Millie, we found out, Hale did much philanthropic, my God, today work in his local black community in Nashville, Tennessee. Together, they distributed uh, food to the poor, offered much of their medical care for free, ran free medical classes and lectures, and converted their home to a local community center, a hosting place for many local community organizations. He was a president of National Medical Association in 1935. And he's a recipient of a Distinguished Service Medal. His name was given to medical organizations, a medical center in California and a public housing pro project in Nashville. Honey, they said we are naming the ghetto after him, all right? And this is him. Early life and education, early life. He was born on the day I already told you in Estelle Springs, Tennessee, into the family of Aaron Hale, who was born and died on these dates, and Emma, whose uh, maiden name was Gray, and her last name was Hale after she had done married Aaron. And she was born on this date in this year, but we don't know when she died. She might still be living, honey. He received his elementary, elementary education in Estelle Springs. Then he moved to Nashville in the 1890s. In 1901, Hale graduated from Walden University in Nashville, also known as Central Tennessee College, period, with a Bachelor's of Science. For the next, and, and this was in 1901. Okay, my girl, my boy, my homeboy, for some reason she decided to stop recording and I'm annoyed because if the beginning of this video is gone, I'm gonna be so mad, so mad. Uh, let's share the screen again and continue. Share. I see a share. Thank you very much. Let's maximize me in this corner, hunty. For the next four years, he attended Meharry Medical College, graduating as a doctor of medicine in 1905 because he was a genius. During his years in Meharry, Hale attended Daniel Hale Williams' surgical clinics, which later influenced Hale's decision to specialize as a surgeon. So it was just a bunch of Hales going on, honey. Soon after his graduation on December 20th, 1905, Hale married his first wife, Nashvillian Millie Essie Gibson was her maiden name and her last name was Hale. She don't have a picture, but she was born in 1881 and she had done died in 1930, um, which is 1881, 91, 01, 12, 20. So she was in her 40s. Wait, yeah, she was in her 40s, 50s. 40s. What year did it say she died? <laughs> she was in her, honey, I can't do math. I can't do math and I drink ice, iced coffee all day. And that's just that. His medical career. After his graduation from Meharry Medical College, Hale was invited to join the college in a full-time capacity as a faculty member and medical practitioner at the hospital adjoined to the college, because he was a genius. The hospital was founded in 1900 by Robert F. Boyd. There was an issue displaying the preview. 
as a 27-bed Mercy Hospital on South Cherry Street. In 1910, it was renamed to Hubbard Hospital and moved to First Avenue South. Hale started as an instructor in histology, which I think is, no, it was not what I thought it was, but it's this, read, read that and remained in uh, this position from 1905 to 1911, so about six years, because I can do math. Not really. However, inspired by, inspired by Daniel Hale Williams, this man right here who, um, what's his play, face, Ron Rico Lee, I think, no, Ron Rico played. Um, Tim Reed played <laughs> him in uh, that dream that Tamara had on Sister Sister that just... <laughs> It's the pinnacle of the show, apparently. Anyway, <laughs> have I talked about Sister Sister yet? Let's find out. I'm talking about John Hoover here. Oh, I'll be talking about Sister Sister this week. Like, just hold on till uh till Thursday for TV Thursday. We talking about it. Anyway, however, inspired by Daniel Hale Williams' surgical clinics, Hale's ambition was to become a surgeon. As a relevant, as a relevant postgraduate, excuse me, as a relevant relevant postgraduate schooling uh was not available at Meharry. Hell had done travel to Mayo Clinic, honey, in Rochester, uh Minnesota, Cryo Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, and the University of Chicago to, to advance his knowledge in surgery. Hell also started practicing surgery as early as 1906, taking in indigent cases. Honey, I almost said indignant. Uh, in Nashville. While teaching histology, Hale briefly headed, uh, headed the tumor clinic at Mercy Hospital, 1906 and 1907, so, you know, about, around a year or, or thereabout. He then served uh, a clinical instructor from 19, instructor from 1911 to 1912. Hale gradually became a self-taught surgeon who would take on most surgeries, which if I heard that today, I would run. But you know what? We thank God for uh, for Mr. Hale. A universalism occasionally practiced at that era. They trying to they trying to throw me off. They trying to throw off your girl. Um, in 1922, Hale became the director of the division of surgery at Meharry, and then in 1923, the chief of staff of the Department of Surgery at Hub Hospital, and in 1924 a clinical professor of surgery at Meharry Medical College. He advanced to full profesh, professoral, excuse me, position in 1931 and in 1938 had done become the chairman of the Department of Surgery at Hubbard Hospital. Hale is credited for performing approximately 30,000 surgeries before his death in 1944. For his outstanding contribution to the Negro medical profession, Hale was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. This hut right here. The ceremony was performed by Ulysses G. Daly. This Ulysses or Ulysses, depending on how country your mama was. Uh, the first Black surgeon recognized by the United States medical profession, period. Miller E. Hospital. Following the sudden death of his two, oh, that's so sad, two-month-old son, John Henry Hale Jr. in 1916, Hale and his wife, Millie Hale, founded a new hospital to treat the Black community of Nashville. This is the hospital right here. You can go to the article if you want to, but I'm not going to do it right now. Which numbered, uh, the, the community of Nashville, which numbered 35,000, honey. I was really finna struggle with that at the time. His wife was the driving force and supervisor of the new institution, which was named after her. While Hale became the surgeon in chief, the hospital opened at 523 7th Avenue and grew from 12 beds in 1916 to 75 beds in 1922. The hospital successfully passed all the standards set by the state, getting an average score of 91%. By 1923, over 5,000 surgeries had been performed at the hospital, most by Hale. After the premature death of his wife in 1930, Hale maintained the Millie E. Hale Hospital for eight more years. In 1938, however, Meharry management insisted that Hale could not stretch himself so broadly, and the hospital closed. Its staff and patients absorbed by Hubbard Hospital, so he didn't leave the girls hanging. Other medical work. Following the example of his mentor, 
<laughs> Daniel Hale Williams, who we have spoken in links about. Uh, Hale conducted multiple teaching clinics all over the American South to spread his, okay, Daniel, to spread his surgical knowledge and practice among fellow Black doctors. Hale was also a patron of the Tuskegee Institute, a historically Black university. You know, we know about Tuskegee, honey. Here's her, here's her crest uh, in Alabama. He served as a president of the National Medical Association, the NMA, in 1935 and was, a, was active in the Mahari Alumni Association. Philanthropy. A religious Christian, Hale devoted most of his time and income to help out the Black community of Nashville. He go, gave over 100 free lectures and clinics. He and his wife did not charge indigent patients uh, at Millie E. Hale Hospital performing uh, medical pr procedures for free and paying for medicines out of their own pocket because they was good. Um, the family gradually converted their family home at 419 4th Avenue uh, South into a community center, which is this, where the public goes, honey. We ain't gonna spend too much time on this. You can go on your own time. A meeting place of numerous organization, organizations working to improve the lives of local people. Hales distributed uh, free food. I guess it's the Hales, honey, both of them. Distributed free food and provided home care to the poorest people in their community. Personal life and death. Friends described Hale as a colorful personality. He was a physically large man, often called Big John. His friends and colleagues also noted Hale to be tempered and religious. Hale married his first wife, Millie, on December 20th, 1905, like I had to, told y'all earlier. They had three children, John Henry Jr. Uh, from these dates, Essie Margaret and Mildred Hale Freeman from these dates. I guess they was twins. I don't know. Mildred followed in her mother's footsteps, graduating from Fisk University, honey. And this is uh, Fisk right here is in Tennessee. My great grandfather went to Fisk. Um, she was active in the Black community and served on the boards of the National Medical Association and the One Young Women whoa, Young Women's Christian Association. She prom promoted religion in the community and worked as a nurse and a school teacher. She married Samuel Henry Freeman from these dates. He held student and later the first black doctor to receive a, a master's degree in orthopedics. All right. After his first wife's premature death that we had already talked about in 1930, Hale married Carrie Jordan Hale. She was born in 1901. The couple then lived at 623 7th uh, Avenue South as Hale's first home remained a community center. Um, in his latter years, Hale developed cardiovascular disease, child. However, he continued to operate, even exhibiting severe symptoms, which I don't want my doctor to have a heart attack while he, have, while he doing surgery on me, but that's just me. He died on March 27, 1944, before my grandmother was born or thought about coron of coronary ins insufficiency, child, or what is now known as coronary artery disease, um, at Hubbard Hospital and was buried in at Greenwood Cemetery in Nashville. Legacy, not the single legacy, but legacy. Hale is credited for significant and extensive contributions to the development of African American medicine, teaching many young physicians who beloved and admired him. He became famous and internationally known, but I'm known to rock a microphone for his medical work. Dr. Edward L. Turner, the president of Meharry College in 1944 believed that Hale had more influence than any other man in the encouragement and development of Negro surgeons. Hale's student, Matthew Walker Sr., who was American physician and surgeon, you can go to his own Wikipedia when you get some time, who succeeded Hale at his post at Meharry, remembered Hale as a brilliant teacher. His two other students remembered him as a professor who captivated the student body. Meharry colleagues eulogized Hale as the Dean of American Negro Surgeons. A mural, which is a, a big painting, honey, 
big painting. And a portrait of Hale was installed in the Meharry Medical College in 19, 1951. And as of 2018, Hale was inducted into the Tennessee Healthcare Hall of Fame, where he do not care because he is dead, but congratulations to his family that may be living. A 500 dwelling public housing project on Charlotte Avenue in Nashville was named after Hale. And as of 2013, uh, 2013, served as a nationwide example of uh, a successful hope for development. Unfamiliar to me. Is it like section eight? You can go to the Wikipedia yourself. A housing project with mixed income integration. I guess that's what it is, honey. I, didn't, I did not read when I hovered. The California chapter of the National Medical Association was named the John Hale Medical Society. At the time of uh, its construction in 1969, a medical center at the cor corner of Fresno Street and Irwin Avenue in Fresco Fresno, California was named the John Henry Hale Medical Center. And that is the end of the Wikipedia. This is John Henry. God rest his soul. And we thank him for his prolific works. Now I said, stop the share. We thank him for his prolific works and we thank you for coming and joining us here at Black History um, of Rambling K. Rambling K is Black History for Black hi History for Rambling K. Uh, join us again. Is this the last segment of it? Join us again next week where we will be talking about another Black woman in history, child. Yeah, come back. <laughs> it'll, it'll still be me. I'll still be wearing this outfit actually. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and all the things that YouTubers say, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.